What is the most polarizing roller coaster? A coaster where it seems you either love it or you hate it. What comes to mind? Perhaps a ride like Skyrush or X2, who contrast insane ride experiences with pain or uncomfortability. Coasters like these will often be at the forefront of any discussion about polarizing rides, but do they deserve it? Or are their reputations based simply off word of mouth and not data? Let's find out using the opinions of the online coaster community. To do this, I went through all of Captain Coaster and picked out coasters that seemed to invite lots of disagreement. I didn't use vote coasters because only Captain Coaster offers a star rating to quickly see what people think of a ride, so this is all based on my own research. I picked out 152 rides and recorded the percentage of people who gave them each of the 10 different star ratings. You can give 5 stars, 4.5 stars, 4 stars, and so on down to 0.5 stars for a coaster on this site. This is 10 different options. Sometimes I will refer to these ratings as scores or bins through the rest of this video. Just know that that means the number of people who chose a specific option, like the bin of all people who picked 3.5 stars. Because of how I did this, just manually going through the rankings, it's possible I've missed out on a few very polarizing coasters here and there. But I tried to be as thorough as possible. What should a polarizing ride look like? Captain Coaster has this helpful chart that shows the distribution of ratings for each ride. The chart of a polarizing ride should have a lot of green at one end and a lot of red at the other, preferably minimizing the amount of yellow in the middle. But not many coasters do this. Slow and gentle declines in star rating are far more typical than a sudden drop-off from good ratings to bad ratings. There aren't many obvious examples of a ride being truly polarized. However, sometimes we see rides with ratings spread out like this, far more evenly. Oftentimes, rides that we think of as polarizing are more spread out. After all, if a number of people think a ride is very good and very bad, there will likely be a fair amount of people in the middle. Here is what the distribution of scores for Magnum XL200 looks like, very spread out. Perhaps this means it is polarizing, but if we really start digging into the numbers, we can better quantify this. One more side note before we start looking at the data. When it comes to surveys that allow you to see what other people have voted on before, there's an issue where people will cast a more extreme vote than they otherwise would to try to drag down the subject. This is what I call the Ozymandias problem. Did 21,000 people, or 9.1% of raiders, watch the Breaking Bad episode Ozymandias and conclude that it was absolutely terrible and one of the worst things they've ever had the misfortune of watching? Or did they just think it was fine, but a bit overrated and not quite worthy of maintaining a perfect 10 out of 10 on the website, and cast an extreme vote to try to drag it down? Maybe there are some people who really, truly think that this episode is a 1 out of 10, but I'm willing to bet that if the Raiders couldn't see in advance that the episode had a perfect score, then they wouldn't be nearly as harsh and cast what they actually thought of it. To exemplify this on Captain Coaster, Twisted Cyclone has the highest number of 0.5 star ratings amongst RMC coasters with two rails. This shouldn't be that surprising, since it is usually considered to be in the lower tier of RMCs, but the coaster with the second most? That would be Steel Vengeance. A higher percentage of people gave it a 0.5 star rating than Rougarou. In other words, if there is something that lots of people give an extremely high score, people who disagree with that score are more likely to give it a very low score out of spite, even if their actual opinion is more moderate. If nobody could see anybody else's scores, it would eliminate this problem. And people would vote based on their own thoughts, without letting other people's ratings influence them. But if ratings weren't public on Captain Coaster, then I wouldn't have been able to do any research, so I'm gonna have to take the bad with the good. For this video, it shouldn't matter too much. Let's start with true polarization and see if we can work with it. Maybe we could add up the percentage of high ratings and low ratings and see which coaster comes out on top. But first, let's set a minimum threshold. Let's examine coasters that had both 10% of users give it a top 2 rating, as in a 5 star or a 4.5 star rating, and had 10% of users also give it a bottom 2 rating, as in a 1 star or a 0.5 star rating. This doesn't seem like that high of a bar to clear at first glance. After all, you could have 80% of people using the middle of the scale, between 4 stars and 1.5 stars. But there are only 3 coasters I found where the top 2 and bottom 2 both received at least 10%. Two of them have low sample sizes, under 40 reviews, which is too low for me to want to include them on the overall list, but I certainly believe that they are truly polarizing. Desperado, the standing but not operating Arrow Hyper at Buffalo Bills outside Las Vegas, has 15% of people giving it a top 2 rating and 15% of people giving it a bottom 2 rating quite polarizing. Over at Indiana Beach, we can find another polarizing ride that was just moved into the state, All-American Triple Loop. This time, the opinions aren't quite as even, as 12% of people give it a top 2 score, while 30% of people give it a bottom 2 score. It's easy for me to believe that this ride is divisive. The final coaster that fits the bill is the Boss at Six Flags St. Louis. And oh yeah, this is a polarizing ride. This chart is exactly what we are looking for. 15% top 2, 17% bottom 2. But instead of crowning the boss, let's give other coasters a chance. 
Trying to find the most polarizing coaster by just adding up the combined percentages of the top two and bottom two is deeply flawed. Ignoring the 10% threshold and looking at coasters that lead this metric, we would quickly find that we aren't looking at polarizing coasters, but rather the best coasters in the world. The coaster with the highest percentage of combined ratings in the top two or bottom two is, naturally, Steel Vengeance, buoyed by its site-leading percentage of 5 ratings, along with more .5 star ratings than you would expect. Instead of adding up the top two and bottom two, we can instead find the difference between them. This would show whether opinions were actually divided equally. So doing top two minus bottom two, a score close to zero would ensure opinions were actually evenly split. But as I previously mentioned, there are just three coasters that have more than 10% in each category. So most of the time, for any coaster that would score close to zero, it's because almost nobody gave it a top two or bottom two score. Take Left Racer at Kings Island. It only has a difference of 1.4 percentage points between its top two and bottom two, but that's because just 4.4% of people gave it a top two score, and 3% of people gave it a bottom two score. So again, if hardly anyone thinks it's at either pole, you can't call it polarizing. True polarization is a pretty harsh metric, and it's rather limiting. Let's be a little more forgiving, and use the principles of a research metric called Net Promoter Score, or NPS. On scales of 1 to 10, NPS deems you a promoter if you give it a 9 or a 10, neutral if you give a 7 or 8, and a detractor if you give a 6 or below. By using this, we've simply expanded the definition of what it means to be a detractor of a coaster. A promoter is still someone who gives a top 2 score, a 4.5 or 5 star rating, but now a detractor of the ride, someone who doesn't like it, we will call someone who gives 2.5 stars or below. I'm going to again make a cutoff to have at least 10% promoters and 10% detractors, but now we've made it easier to have the necessary number of detractors. Instead of just 3 rides, there are now 37 rides that fit the criteria. Let's take a look at the top 20 or so, ranked by how close they are to an even split between promoters and detractors. Okay, this list makes some sense, but it could be better. I wouldn't call Wild Thing the most polarizing coaster ever. After all, 75% of users give it between a 3 and a 4. Maybe now that we've ensured a minimum number of polarization, at least 10% lovers and 10% haters, now it's okay to just add up the total polarization. If we do this, the list comes close to flipping, though not entirely. Now Timberwolf has the most total polarization, though the vast majority of it is contained among the detractors. But a few coasters do place highly both on the sum of their promoters and detractors, and the difference between them. Let's average the two rankings to isolate these coasters. Now we can list them by the highest average ranking, the rides that have both a high percentage of total polarization and a low difference between the percentage of promoters and detractors. There are actually 9 different coasters tied for the 9th place spot. This data doesn't really start separating itself until the top 6, so you shouldn't read too much into the list until then, but some of these 9 coasters include The Boss, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain, and Hades 360. Tied for 7th is Tonnerre de Zeus at Park Asterix. Also tied for 7th is The Raven at Holiday World. In 6th place is Montezuma's Revenge at Knott's Berry Farm. In 5th place is Saw the Ride at Thorpe Park. Tied for 3rd place is Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point. Also tied for 3rd place is Furious Baco at Port Aventura. Number 2 is Lost Coaster of Superstition Mountain at Indiana Beach. And number one is Mind Blower at Fun Spot Kissimmee. This is the only coaster I looked at where it had both 20% promoters and 20% detractors. It's top 10 in both rankings, the only coaster to do so. Though it isn't in the top 5 in either, I think it makes far more sense as the overall number one most polarizing coaster in either Wild Thing or Timberwolf. Averaging these rankings makes the list much better than it was. So there you have it. Mind Blower is the world's most polarizing coaster. But, to get here, I've made a lot of arbitrary decisions. I've made cutoffs, built rules that feel right to me personally, and then done rankings, summations, and averages until I got something I liked. And while I do like what I got, there really should be a simpler way to measure disagreement without having to do all this. Luckily, there is a far more straightforward way available. All we have to do is tweak the question just a little. Standard deviation is a good tool to measure disagreement, but that doesn't mean it measures true polarization. While polarization tries to determine the coaster that gets lots of love and lots of hate, standard deviation tries to determine the coaster that gets the widest variety of opinions. In other words, polarization isn't concerned with the middle, more neutral scores, but standard deviation can be used to find a ride where every single option on the rating scale gets a similar percentage of votes. It can find the coaster where every person who walks off will have a different opinion, 
using the entire range of scores, not just the top two or bottom five. So now the question we are asking is, what coaster has the most even spread of opinions? In this case, standard deviation refers to the average distance between the mean bin, which is always 10 because 100% divided by 10 bins equals 10, and the other bins. So a coaster with a low standard deviation would signify that the average bin length in percentage points is close to 10%, the mean. In other words, every bin is pretty close to 10%, which would indicate an even split of opinions amongst all 10 options, from 5 stars to 0.5 stars. Using percentages normalizes the data. We shouldn't use raw standard deviation because the sample size affects it greatly. Take Aftershock at Silverwood. Since very few people have reviewed it, there isn't a large difference in the number of people who rank it at each level, so it looks like opinions are more evenly divided than they are if you just look at standard deviation. After all, standard deviation is small relative to other rides. But if you look at the percentages, it's easy to tell that most people generally like the coaster. The percentages are a way of normalizing the data, putting them all on the same playing field, not letting sample sizes affect standard deviations, beyond a minimum threshold, of course. So Aftershock's small sample size made it appear more divisive than it actually is. On the other end of the spectrum, there's Tenere de Zeus, whose large sample size made it appear less divisive than it actually is. It ranks 140th out of 151 on raw standard deviation numbers, which means deviation is very high, because so many people have reviewed it. But the bins clearly show that every bin is similar based on percentages. This has the look of a divisive coaster, and it is in fact in the top 5. With that out of the way, let's look at the coasters with the smallest standard deviation and thus the most equal bin composition. Honorable mentions that just missed the cut include Dragonfire at Canada's Wonderland, Jolly Rancher Remix at Hershey Park, Viper at Darien Lake, and Nighthawk at Carowinds. Number 10 is Roar at Six Flags America, a GCI Woody. Number 9 is Wild Beast at Canada's Wonderland, a PTC Woody. Number 8 is Loop Guru at Wallaby Belgium, a Vacoma Woody. Number 7 is Grizzly at King's Dominion, a PTC Woody with retracking by the Gravity Group. Number 6 is The Riddler Revenge at Six Flags New England, of Acoma SLC. Number 5 is Insane at Gronalund, an Intamin Zaxpin. Number 4 is Viper at Six Flags Magic Mountain, an Arrow Looper. Number 3 is Green Lantern at Six Flags Great Adventure, a B&M Stand-Up. Number 2 is Tonnerre de Zeus at Park Asterix, a Gravity Group Woody. Number one is The Boss at Six Flags St. Louis, a CCI Woody. Overall, I think this list makes sense. The Boss really does look like the most divisive coaster there is. Almost every bin is within five percentage points of 10%. The max is 17% for a three and a half star rating, and the minimum is 4.4% for a one star rating. Only Tenere de Zeus comes close to this type of split, but it seems The Boss is the king of inviting divisive opinions. With most of the rides on this list, you might find yourself asking one question, how painful are these rides? It may seem like everyone has a different response. It may feel like Skyrush and X2, among other rides, are more divisive, but that's more a product of their popularity. It's actually somewhat shocking how the vast majority of ratings on Captain Coaster are positive for these rides, given what you sometimes hear about them. Sure, they certainly do have detractors, but when it comes to true evenness amongst lovers and haters, they are nowhere near the top. So there you have it. The Boss is the most divisive coaster in the world, at least according to Captain Coaster. Meanwhile, the most polarizing coaster in the world, just looking at people who love it or hate it, is Mind Blower. Tenere de Zeus, the only ride to be in the top 10 on both lists, also seems to be one of the world's most controversial rides. With this settled, I'm sure there will never be another video about polarizing coasters ever made again. So the next time someone tells you about how polarizing Nitro is, you can smile and nod politely, then direct them to this video. Thanks for watching.